Hey, how you doing? And yeah, how you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm trying to figure this out. I've never used this one. <laughs> well, it's working. I can see you and hear you. Can you see me? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. How are you? Good. You surviving everything? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're we're doing we're practicing what we preach. Excellent. We're, Excellent. We're advising to it. overcome, it. you know, don't you know, life is ten percent what happens, ninety percent how we react to it kind of stuff. I understand. I understand. Yeah. How's it going in your business? Um, it, it's interesting right now. My hours have been cut at the practice. Oh, wow. Um, I'm sorry. I said, oh, wow, because I would have thought that, you know, you, that would have needed you. Yeah. No, being in private practice without having enough um, stuff to protect ourselves and our patients. Like we don't have a ton of personal protective equipment and we aren't um, able to take care of the, you know, somebody coming in, like if they really did have COVID-19 and we have to think about the health and safety of our other patients and that kind of stuff. So um, CDC said that, you know, offices should be open for essential visits only. So emergencies and that kind of thing and try to utilize telemedicine okay. as much as possible. So That's, yeah. they had to cut office hours altogether. So they had extended hours until eight in the evening and now they cut them until six and they start at nine instead of eight in the morning. And then, yeah, Saturdays and Sundays had to go too. So hmm. it's all right. I'm about to launch my website for Do Live Well for my new business. So that's great. That's, great. that's why I'm like, I'm going to go listen to whatever you have to say because I can't believe I'm going to launch a business in the middle of this all, but it's well, online. And you know, look, here, here's the truth of the matter. We'll see what happens here. You never know when you do something like this. I mean, like 17 people clicked that they were interested in coming or whatever. Mm -hmm. But if it ends up being just you and I, then um, I that will send you the notes. And we don't have to do the formal presentation. We can talk and I can try to help you with what you're oh, doing. Sure. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah the, um, you, what I did for fun with this, because, uh, and, and to be honest, I, um, I did it, one, because I want to get into practice of doing weekly seminars as a community event. But, um, but two, quite frankly, I've gotten a lot of compliments and lots of people have asked about, about our leadership during this thing. So I was like, huh, it might be a good seminar subject. Well, and, you're incredibly inspirational. So. I don't see why everybody wouldn't want to listen to you. Well, thank you very much for that. I've always, I've told everyone, I was like, you know, you have to go to KMA. You have to go see Grandmaster Steve. I'm like, he, I, 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 it, like, you know, like for myself, you know, I'm not, I'm not so much selling a product. I'm selling a service. I'm selling me. And I bought into you. Like 110%. Like I tell everyone, I'm like, Steve Del Castillo over at KMA just, knows every i'm like i'm thrilled to be part of your family so, thank you thank you, thank you. Oh, no no absolutely absolutely i'm glad my girls are there julia's finally out of a cast oh good <laughs> are they going to be able to do the virtual classes with us um i actually i spoke to bill tonight when we had dinner i was like look you're in charge of kmma and he's already started downloading things and doing stuff we're going to clean out the garage this weekend cool because we have a boxing kit bag um, and so he's, I don't know, but they're setting up the whole thing out there. But do you guys get my emails or? Yes. Yeah. Because I sent today the virtual schedule that starts Monday. Yes. And, and using this exact same technology. Okay. We'll actually be conducting classes. Oh, that's live. awesome. Live. Okay. Because okay. originally we did a lot of great recording. We recorded all the material from, from now to black belt. And we're also building an actual online teachable course. But. Awesome. To be honest, that's just that's for people that aren't blessed enough to have the, the real deal like you're talking about because mm -hmm. because let's face it, you can't put all that in a in a pre recorded video program. It's the interaction between the, the, the sensei and the kids. It's it's so much more than so the realization of that was what got us experimenting with this and we did the testing. We actually conducted the testing. I saw that. Wednesday and Thursday, and it was like I almost felt like it was live. It was, you oh, know, wow. so so, so I feel strong that, that it's going to work and that we're going to be able to, you know, provide the same. Uh, did, did other people get on here or no? I don't know. It's weird because I keep getting messages. Your meeting attendees are waiting, but I don't see anybody else on here. Hope they're not all going to the wrong meeting room. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I see two participants. Yeah, that's just us then. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, I, had to, I had to download it to my computer. Yeah, well, that's all right. The, um, but I think it's going to work good. And I think like, you know, the, the girls especially, and, um, you know, we'll have a, a better experience. Coming in. You know, they'll have a better experience if they, if they stay like this, then, then, uh, why am I? Oh yeah, there we go. Rocco. Not Rocco though, I bet it, but it's his dad. Oh no, it is Rocco. Hey Rocco. Mm -hmm. You're going to do this seminar with us? The what? You're going to do this seminar with us? Hi. That is, that is so cool. Which seminar? So this one. <laughs> My dad just told me that there was some class tonight and I. Yeah. Well, look, I mean, you are welcome to stay if you like. Um, this one is, um, ironically, I thought your dad was going to be on this one. This one is called Warriors Lead in Time of Crisis. So it's for, mm -hmm. it's for uh, people that lead organizations or families or. Oh. And, <laughs> but you know what? That doesn't mean you can't. You're a leader. You can, it's up to you. If you want to stay, you can. Um, what they might have been telling you about is the seven o'clock class is my map, which is martial arts professional. And then it'll be a bunch of other people your age that want to be sensei one day. That's the one that probably, oh, okay, Bill's on the wrong. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think my mom knew what she was clicking on, so. Yeah. It's up to you. Up to you, brother. Do you want to stay, right. with, stay with us? If you want to come back at seven, come back at seven. All right, I might come back at seven, I think. <laughs> okay. Although, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna send uh, I'm gonna send Bill Crone in the correct one though, because he's apparently in the. Yeah, master. All right. Well, I'll see you later. All right. Good to see you, Rocco. Bye. Someone's joining this one. Hey, Grandmaster. Hey, hey, Bill. How you doing? <laughs> how you doing? There we this go. Phoenix. And there's Bill. I think I was clicking on the wrong invite. <laughs> I, I figured it out when I saw I sent you the right one now. I don't know if you even saw that yet or if you figured it out. but I got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, good to see you. You good too. Well. And so there's two Bills. Oh, and Bill and Bill, that's right, yeah. Hey, man, what's up, Bill? How are you doing? <laughs> good. Hey, Phoenix. Hey, Phoenix. Hi, uh, Phoenix, we can't hear uh, you. You got to get the mic. You got your mic off. muted. I am Phoenix. Go ahead. I still can't hear you though. Huh. Did you hear us? Nope, she's on mute. Hello? Can you hear us? Maybe her microphone's down. Strange. Strange. Gotta love technology. Yeah. Well, Bill, uh, boy, sir, I was just, uh, <laughs> I was just uh, explaining to your wife that this is the same technology we're going to be using to go live with classes on Monday. Uh, the Zoom. All right, no, part, this is, ours is not Zoom. Suite. It's like Zoom. It's like Zoom. It's just, I, I think it's a better version than Zoom, but. Okay. Right. It, it's Zoom-ish. And Zoom. um, so this particular software, um, I mean, you'll be able to actually get on with the girls and just take, and, and Sensei Kyle and Sensei Sarah are running the classes, and it's okay. like a real live interactive class. Cool. No, I'm, I don't know if Danielle said anything, but we're I'm setting up the uh, the garage. We, Danielle has mats, so I'm gonna put down some mats or uh, and all. So we're gonna clean up this weekend, so we'll get it for Monday. That's awesome. I'm looking forward to it. That's fantastic. Can you, yeah. can and, you uh, hear me now? Yes. Yeah, sorry, yes. Phoenix. Hey, hey Phoenix. Okay, I figured it out. I have a technical question. Can I download this to my laptop as well? Do you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, I'm using my laptop right now. Well, can you do me a favor and send it to me off of Facebook? Send me a link because somehow my Facebook on my computer is messed up and I can't figure out how to get into yeah, it. Yeah, I can send it to you like on email or. Perfect. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Bill Cronin. Um, yes, sir. Great to have you on here. Uh, congratulations on your great testing. Thank uh, you. That was fun. Yeah, you did awesome. I was just explaining to, to the board how good that testing went. And um, thank you for the for the for introducing me to Sarah because I think uh, you know that 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 went a great way. And uh, Sarah, and participant. Oh, look at that! <laughs> uh, if my wife was on here, she would be so jealous. We we have three, and this is the puppy, and he's he uh, he can't keep out of mischief. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so. Um, 
Well, guys, thanks for, for, for coming on here. Uh, I am honored because you're all leaders already. And, um, you know, what I did, of course, as I, as I do, is took it seriously and prepared something that I thought uh, would be specifically in line with the fact that I'm a leader that also happens to be your martial arts instructor. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so it's got kind of a martial theme, um, <laughs> but I think that it also uh, applies to, to our leadership in crisis and leadership in general. And like I said, since, there's, since you're all high-level leaders, uh, I don't mean any condescension when I, when I share the information with you. I appreciate you being here. Um, the, uh, also, I should probably let you know that I am recording us. So we will be, uh, we'll be sharing. Uh, and then the third thing is that um, because you're all high level leaders, at any point in time that I'm hitting one of the points on my, my talking notes, if you really want to chime in with, with something, a question, comment, or real world example, or supporting you know, information from your own experience, uh, you are welcome and invited to do so. Okay? So I called this thing, I called this thing uh, Warriors Lead in Time of Crisis. And I, so we have to start with what is a warrior? And, you know, I just looked it up and it says, warrior is a noun that refers to a soldier or someone who is involved in a fight. Today, the word warrior is frequently used to describe a person who is very strong and doesn't give up easily. And I just thought, you know, that, that I picked the theme because of the fact that we're also martial artists together. But it's also so, so relevant in a time like now. You know, it's, it's, um, you, you all know that I always say in the dojo that we're a leadership academy that happens to also teach the most practical self-defense. And I know that there are times that some of my students are, are kind of poo-pooing the leadership training aspect of things. They're probably like, man, I'm here to learn this. And he keeps giving us these leadership lectures. <laughs> but we also know, everybody that's on this call knows that, man, at time like this, like, times like this, you find out who's been paying attention to their leadership lessons, right? And uh, I mean, how many, how many of the rest of you besides me have noticed some people with the title that are not behaving very leadership-like? Right? <laughs> seen a lot. <laughs> so, so I think that it, it, leadership development is like self-defense training, right? We need to be doing it all the time. And then, it, because you can't develop, you can't learn to defend yourself while you're being attacked. And you can't develop leadership at a time like this. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that the reason why it was the perfect theme for this. Hey, welcome, Ephraim. Oh, my God. Ephraim came on from the. Oh, no, that's just a fake. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, he got me for a second. All right. So the. Um, <laughs> the um, yeah, for a brief moment, I forgot that he couldn't possibly be. <laughs> the. Um, so what I was saying, Ephraim, is that, you know, we chose the theme of the warrior for this particular leadership conference because you're all my martial arts students, but it's also just perfect because, you know, we're kind of in this, this war right now, and you cannot prepare with leadership. You cannot prepare to defend yourself. You cannot prepare anything when you need it. You have to prepare ahead of time. Going, and by the way, everybody on here is a leader, right? In some sort, mothers, fathers, business leaders, others. We're all leaders. Uh, and in times of war, we must all be warriors. And we are indeed in a war, uh, even though this is against, as the president said today, an, an invisible visible enemy. Mm -hmm. uh, so what are some of the traits of a warrior then? And I went to one of my heroes in martial arts lore, which is the samurai. And so I'm going to share with you the eight virtues of the samurai, what is called the Bushido Code. And, and I think that they're so applicable to what we're going through today. And the first is called rectitude. Rectitude in, in modern day language is what I would call decisiveness. Uh, but, but in the well-known samurai, it says rectitude is one's power to decide upon a course of conduct in accordance with reason without wavering, to die when to die is right to strike when to strike is right. And that's the first virtue uh, is rectitude, which we'll call decisiveness. The second is courage and, and it's courage in the traditional way, but it's also just courage to do what is right, even when it's not convenient. And the next one is benevolence, which of course we know is kindness. Uh, in, in, the, in my study here, the, this particular samurai said uh, that, uh, that one that, it, that commands the power to kill is also expected to demonstrate equally extraordinary powers 
of benevolence and mercy. Love, magnanimity, affection for others, sympathy and pity are traits of benevolence, the highest attribute of the human soul. And then there's politeness, honesty, honor, loyalty, character, and character and self-control, which is, is all part of the eighth one. So, so what do these virtues have to do with leadership in the time of crisis? Well, first and foremost, as I've kind of already alluded to, I believe that just like we say in the dojo all the time, we pray for the best, but we train for the worst. And I believe that all of these virtues are virtues. You know, uh, Aristotle used to call virtues excellences. You know, the uh, adithi was the Greek word which meant the excellence of something, the virtue. So for example, the virtue of a knife is its ability to cut. These virtues are like that, which means, in other words, of course, you cannot sharpen them when you need to cut. Mm -hmm. You have to have it sharp. And I think that uh, we can, that they're also applied right now in the time of crisis. And I have some specific examples. So for example, um, the first thing that I believe we have to do in this time of crisis for the people that follow us is to be calm in the storm. And I'm going to tie that to the virtues of benevolence and politeness. And when I was in the military, we called it grace under fire, that, that the troops should never see you sweat. The, our job is to inspire our troops. And we can feel fear, but we can't show fear. We can, we can even be worried but we can't cause them to worry. It's our job to inspire confidence. And, and we do this in many ways. And one of them is grace under fire. And one of them is over communicating. Right. And um, so, so, so all of these things about being calm in the storm are, are representative of benevolence and politeness. Active, acting decisively and courageously is in line with rectitude and courage. Being confident and calm, but also transparent, is what the samurai called honesty in the code. And, and you know, it's not our job to protect our people from the truth. We need to brief the enemy situation, uh, but we also got to brief our commander's intent and the concept of the operation. And I believe specifically that our troops need to know that we have a plan, what that plan is, or at least the part that pertains to them and especially what it means for them. People mm -hmm. need to know that we care about them and that they're gonna be okay. And that what they're, and, and what they're part of the plan is to make sure that we're okay. And that part of, uh, of, of them knowing that we care about them, I believe that ties very, very much to uh, the samurai virtue of loyalty. Before I continue on, I wanna, I wanna take a break because as I said in the very, very beginning, you're all high level leaders here. And, and if anybody would like to chime in with anything to, to enrich in what I've said, uh, I, would, I would welcome it. Uh, I'll just add, I think um, you, you were touching on the importance of the why, of making sure that, um, that people know why you're asking them to do something or, or what is that final product I think is really important in communication and that if they don't understand it, um, they don't feel like they're a piece of it. It's kind of like a uh, um, somebody on assembly line building a car and they're just building one little piece of it and they don't know it looks like a car. They have no idea what they're contributing to the effort. So as a leader, sometimes you have to paint the picture for them and show them what the, what the output is, whether it's to win a battle, win the war. Um, in the case of what I'm doing at, at work right now, it's to make sure that uh, companies know what resources are available for them right now and how to get through it. And when I talk to my troops, I have to tell them, hey, at the end of the day, what we're trying to get them to do is to not give up hope and to take advantage of these resources. Once you paint that picture, you can, uh, you can help them deliver it that way. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a great, great point. I think your comment about communicating was very important too in terms of explaining what the situation is explaining that you have a plan, explaining to others what their role in the plan is, because that gives them some 
feeling that they have a level of control over something that seems uncontrollable yes, when you help them fully understand what's happening. Yes, ma'am. Great point as well. Both of your points that reminded me too that if we do not over communicate, if we do not explain their part of the plan, you know, as, as both of you uh, contributed just now, that, that the problem is then their imagination is going to fill in what, whatever they want to. And, uh, you know, I didn't even have that on my, on my talking points, but that's such an important point. If we do not communicate to the team at all times, the truth of what's happening, but in a way that says, look, this is the problem, but this is what we're going to do about it. And this is your part. If we fail to do that, then then their imagination will run, run rampant, and mm -hmm. of course the worst will happen. Uh, and you know, and I know it's it's different also for different size organizations. Like ours is very small. And I'm going to finish this thing with a little case study of what we've done so far here at KMMA. But but us being a very small business, uh, as you can imagine, this is this is very very difficult. You know, this is, and uh, you know, and and as you can imagine, my my people are you know, fearful. So, the, uh, uh, you know, and, and look, of course, that's true for anybody. I was listening to Dave Ramsey talk the other day. He's got 900 employees now and millions of dollars of retained earnings. And, but he said something brilliant. He said, he said, at this time, my people know that there's no risk. But I've also shown them the lines. And I've shown them at what point those lines cross and I have to start cutting people. Mm -hmm. Not to give them fear, but to, to, to show them, look, this is, this is the end, this is what we're, what we're facing. And, and I think you guys nailed it. It's, it's our job to over communicate and, and give them the, the stuff so that they can do that part. I mean, like I said, I'm jumping ahead a little bit into the case study, but my team is kicking butt. We're producing like we've never produced right now. And I think it's, you know, they, they, want, they want us to survive and thrive through this thing you know does anybody remember does anybody remember a movie from oh there you are yeah i thought we lost you i got um, i have you on now go ahead let me, let me see um no does anybody remember a movie from 20 years ago called life is beautiful no i never saw um, it. heard of it i've no. never seen it well i mean it was um during world war ii and um, it, it took place in Italy. And it was this dad um, trying to, his, his, the, the dad and his like five-year-old son were um, captured by the Nazis and were uh, being sent to a concentration camp. And the dad made it like a game for his five-year-old son um, so that his, his son wouldn't be scared but would do everything he needed to do to survive. And I just thought it was such a great example of that. I mean, of, of course, it's fictional, but in a way that, um, you know, doing it, t making it clear to the kid that there were things he had to do to survive, mm -hmm. but doing it in an age-appropriate way so the kid wasn't scared. Yeah, that's outstanding. That's outstanding. I, like the I mean, you should watch the movie sometime if you haven't seen it. It's, it's just a great example. I like the fact that you touched on that we need to show people that we care. And it gives a sense of loyalty, but not only loyalty where you would expect your customer to be loyal to you, but you to be loyal to your customer, so to speak. Um, and, and knowing that so much of the population or all of us, myself, especially, we are such an emotional breed of people um, and emotions and, and play such a high role in, in making our thoughts and decisions and Bill and I always talk, you know, what do you say, 30% are very, very analytical and yes. make decisions based on their brains and the rest of us are making decisions with our heart maybe and, emotions. and then our emotions. And so I think it's so important um, to show that we still care about those that we're trying to help, um, especially for myself as a healthcare provider. You know, Steve, I had mentioned to Steve earlier that my hours have been cut um, in the in the practice because I'm a weekend warrior, but we're not all able to work um, But I still communicate and reach out to my patients and let them know, you know 
I am available to you. You can get a message into the office and to let them know that I know you're scared, but please let me help educate you and give you the tools, the educational tools that you need so that you're not, you know, going off of everything that's, you know, what is it, fake news that mm -hmm. we're hearing so much of. So right. I think caring and showing empathy is so important in today's times, like you said, Steve. Thank you. I appreciate all of you. It's cool that everybody contributed uh, exactly what I thought would happen here is happening, and I appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the, the last part I wanted to talk about as far as the virtues is the, the final virtue of the samurai code under the code of Bushido is character and self-control. And the reason I, I saved it for last is because I think that this final virtue is the one being most tested now. You know, it's, it's a virtue that, that is not developed through crisis, but it is revealed through it. You know, and which is not to say, like, like when, I, when I just said what I said, I'm, I'm sure somebody immediately had the thought, wait, but character is developed through crisis. And, but my argument would be that, that character and specifically self-control is developed through struggle. And struggle is an important part of developing character. But in a true crisis, like the one that we're experiencing right now, we find out who we really are. And so do those that follow us. Right? So, um, you know, kind of it goes to, to what I was talking about at the very, very beginning, which is that, you know, you got to prepare for these things ahead of time. And then, and then at the time, you get, you get to find out where you're at. It's like, no, I mean, look, think about our Krav Maga again. It just so happens that it worked out that everybody on the call is my Krav Maga student. It probably doesn't just so happen. That's probably because <laughs> I, 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 very, I, but I very much appreciate you guys being here. But, but, but think, <clears throat> where do we find out in Krav Maga if you really know your technique or not? That's true. Under pressure. In, yes. the stress drill, in the stress drill. So mm -hmm. say, that's the point of the story is anybody can do any technique when they know what's coming and when somebody says, Hey, do this now, but on the stress drill, you find out how well prepared you are. So my argument is that this situation, what has happened to us all and the, and the, the various degrees of fear, you know, for look, for many of us, it's, it's, it's more economic than the, than the healthcare, right? Let's face it. But the reality is that still we, we reveal to ourselves how well we've prepared by what we're able to do uh, in our leadership capacity. But everybody agree with that, have anything to say about that before I would move on? Anybody want to add anything? Well, I think you're right on, absolutely. All the, all the things that we go through in life help us build character, but you never really know what you're gonna do under stress until it happens. Mm -hmm. I think the other thing that's important that, that is good to explain with the people when you're talking to them is that you can only control what you can control. So what is happening in the world is not something that you can't get fixated on it and woe is me. It's whatever's happening is happening. What is it that you can do that can help you or get the job done that you need to get done and focus on what you can control, not what you cannot control. Absolutely. Absolutely. Circle of concern, circle of control. We only invest, we only invest our time and energy where those two circles intersect. Yeah. And, and, and that's true all of the time. But I would agree with you, Bill, that it's especially true now. And uh, and yeah, I don't know what we do to get people to stop listening to to, to mass media, but but uh, you know the the um, we in here know that you got to severely limit it. You know, you put on. You watch when when the people that are actually in the know are talking, and and you turn off all the rest. The um, so I wanted to to talk next a little bit, and I hope that this will be useful because I certainly don't mean it as a, uh, you know, something to to say, hey, we're doing a great job or anything like that. But I did a self self evaluation of what's happened at KMMA. I said, okay, I think it'll be useful to study what's happened since we had to close. So the first thing was that um, the day that I realized that I was going to have to close the dojo, and of course I had been thinking about it for several days. I had been going back and forth about whether we were really going to have to close the physical facility or not. And the decision was the day that the president came on and said, "No more than ten people, and and you know should be together any place." So I looked at whoever was working at that time. I said, "Okay, well that that's." 
tells it, you know? So on that day, I, I called my team over. I said, Hey, we're tomorrow. Um, I told them, I said, this is what's going to happen tonight. I'm going to put a, a notice out that we're going to close tomorrow. We meet back here and we stand up our emergency operations center. And um, so they knew that they went knowing that much. And then I sat and, and I created my message to all the students, that letter that y'all got, hopefully y'all got mm -hmm. that explained, you know, what we were going to do for our students. And then we closed the dojo. But then the very next day, and this is an example, hopefully, of some of the things that I've tried to communicate in this in, in practical application. The very next day, I sat with the team and I laid out four strategic priorities. And I said, we have four things that we got to accomplish throughout this crisis. I said, number one, I want to continue to pay my key leaders. And of course, I'm talking to my key leaders when I say this. I say, I want to be able to continue to pay my key leaders. So number two, I want us to continue to serve our students, customers, and other shareholders even better than we ever have before. I said, number three, we're going to use this time to complete all the important leadership, administrative systems, and other initiatives that we don't usually have the time to. And I said, number four, and maybe most important, we're going to stay positive, we're going to stay powerful, and we're going to use our platforms to lead from the front. And, I, and then I reminded them, I said, we're a leadership organization that also teaches focus, fitness, and self-defense. And now's the time to use the skills that we sharpen every single day to serve our community even better than we have before. And since then, what we've been doing, of course, on a day-to-day -day basis is doing everything within our power to do that. What's that, Danielle? No, I'm agreeing with you. Oh, awesome. I'm agreeing with you. I, I found I found your email on that day. I remember that day. I found your email very helpful mm -hmm. because, um, you know, like any other human being, I had my fears and I had my worries. It's interesting that as this has gone further, they've diminished. Uh, things have in some ways gotten more challenging. But one of the things that I was sort of uh, grabbing onto and that I was, um, that was helping me at the time was knowing that you were still open. The KMMA was still going on. You know, I was holding on to whatever parts of normalcy in my life that I could. And when I got, and, and, I, and one of my biggest fears at the time was that, was that our dojo would close because it was something I was holding on to. <laughs> so when I had to face that fear, and I was afraid it would close and I had to confront that and have it be the situation. But then it didn't because it was just the physical location, not the dojo, hmm. not us. It was um, very reassuring to me. Well, thank you for that. And I want to make sure that I give some credit to, to Mr. Cronin, who's on here, because uh, I contacted him that night. You know, um, uh, the wise man has an abundance of counselors kind of deal. And, and I and I contacted uh, Mr. Cronin and I let him, uh, Bill Cronin, and I let him look at the letter I was gonna put out. And uh, he actually helped me change the language uh, a little bit because even though the plan was the same plan we did, I was using the language closed. Mm -hmm. and, and Bill specifically said, you're not closing. <laughs> Bill said, you're not closing, don't use that language. And he told me they were going through the same thing at the EOS, at the, um, see, but the, the Pasco Economic Development Council, <laughs> and, EDC, um, EDC. Yeah. and um, he said, hey, we just went through the same thing. And, and, and what we decided was the language is we're not closing. We're just, we just going under this alternate, you know, this alternate uh, way of doing business. And Different um, format. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he was, he was instrumental in, in, in that. So, um, so thank you. I'm publicly uh, recognizing you and, and giving you the credit and I appreciate you doing it. Bill. Yeah. yeah, thank you, thank you, Bill. Good. That but, was very, but it's worth Unbeknownst to me, until just now, that was a very helpful choice of words. How about that? That's pretty cool. Well, and I think, again, back again to the whole communication thing, is that when we're communicating uh, with people that we are responsible to and responsible for being very careful with how we word things uh, can either make or break the message and it can make or break what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I know at my work, I had to call and basically cancel a bunch of appointments 
but I never told anybody their appointment was canceled. I said, you're, we're on pause. We're going on pause. And when, when we come off of pause, I will be contacting you to get a new appointment set up. But I never told them they were canceled. What I keep telling my kids is school is not closed. You're just not on campus right now. That's right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. How you frame the messaging to people is so important. Uh, and just a word can, can wreck your entire message. Oh, heck yeah. That ca careers, have, careers have lived and died on that. Especially yeah, it can work in the previous profession. So thank you for the great conversation. And uh, I want to welcome uh, Scott onto the call from New York. He, he just got on with us. He, I've actually been here, sir. I just didn't have video. Oh, good. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. Hey, guys. We are happy Thanks. to see you. Scott, um, oh, so you've heard everything we've talked about so far? Yep. Cool. You got anything you want to contribute or? No, I mean, you and I spoke, I want to think, two weeks before we were deep in this. I mean, we're a little bit ahead of you guys, I think, up here in New York. Um, mm -hmm. It's a little harsher. Uh, people are probably a little more panicked. Um, but I think it's all the same fears that we have to allay with our students, you know. Um, I told you we were talking about doing video classes at the same time you were talking about it. Because um, we had to decide weeks in advance whether we were coming down for camp. We had, you know, 10 people booked to come down for camp. And I had parents asking me, you know, are we really going to get on an airplane? Um, so we had to make that decision a little bit before anything else happened. So I was in contact with Grandmaster Steve. Um, but we're doing the same thing you're doing. I mean, we're a little bit smaller. Um, it's just Stephanie and I running the show. So, she, you know, she's in front of the camera. I'm behind the camera. But, you know, we're having class. Now we're having class five nights a week. So we've got three... Three days of classes for the kids, three nights of classes for the adults, and then we've got a weapons class and a kata class. So we're doing the same thing. Yeah. Um, we're doing them all on Zoom, and yeah, we've got about I want to say we have about 15 kids and probably about six adults actively participating, which is great. We've got about a 90, 92 percent of the people are sticking by us. You know, a couple, a couple are going to have tough times. You know, we have a couple families where both parents are out of work. And like, we have to suspend our membership. And we yeah. said, that's fine. We understand. But, you know, the classes are still there for you. Please keep coming. Please keep your kids entertained. Keep your kids healthy. You know, you guys are welcome to join any adults classes if you want. We have to do that because just like we're part of your community, they're part of our community. Um, so we have to do that. Of course. But all the th same things apply. I just think everything here is, you know, a week or two ahead of what you guys are feeling. Well, it, it, it's ahead and, and everything's different anyway, right? I mean, like... Like let's face it, you live in a place where everybody's so and so close, and and you know there's so many people in such a small space, and yeah. and you know and for that and and, uh, and probably some other reasons. As a New York as a New York City and myself, I kind of feel like um, New York City multiplies every problem that any any place else has because yeah, it's I New York City. Yeah, you can't do anything in New York and be six feet from someone. Right. Yeah. And right. It's just the nature of the beast. I mean, the cor the coronavirus has discovered what everybody else with New York has discovered. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> um, sadly. Uh, well, you know, look, I'm bringing it back to the pre and that was funny. And at the same time, we sure hope you make it there, right? Like the reality is, that's the reality, and it's 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 the um, yes there. I, did anybody get to see my self-defense video I put out this morning? Self-defense in the coronavirus um, environment. Yeah. No, I didn't see that one, sir. In it, I talked about the fact that look, there's the self-defense that we train for, and that I always say I hope we never have to use, which is against a stick or a knife or a gun attack or some kind of physical attack. But like right now, that kind of attack is even less possible than ever before. However, there's still a lot of really big threat right and the one obviously is the virus itself and we got to do the common sense things against that like washing, washing our hands and following the cdc guidelines and all those things but then the second is of course the, the, oh, not just the, the um does anybody know who that is so i can read them <laughs> i'm sorry yes how are you there we go 
All right. So the um the second is the the um it's the economic threat, but specifically in this way. Uh -huh. Like right now, in the same way as there's those thugs that would want to hurt people and rob them and all those things, right? Those idiots are online now. There's more, not idiots, they're just bad, evil people. There, there's more of those scumbags with, uh, uh, what do you call it, scams, all kinds of scams online and all that stuff than any other given time because they see the vulnerability, mm -hmm. you know? That, so uh, I heard my mother-in-law this morning over coffee telling my wife about one where, you know, they, they hey, um, apply for your, for your stimulus check. And so they get vulnerable people to click and then they get all their information, yep. right? So the second form of self-defense is, is us, you know, defending ourselves, but then also especially communicating to our moms and grandmoms. I mean, not, not all senior citizens are as sharp as Phoenix, right? So we need, so we need to look out for. Yeah, I was getting ready to come for you. <laughs> <laughs> we got to look out for the, for the ones that aren't. I mean, particularly, you know, tech savvy, know that those kinds of things happen and all that, right? And then, and then the third, quite frankly, is uh, the depression and such that can come from isolation and stuff. Mm -hmm. Why communities like this are so important. And uh, so anyway, that's on, that's on the virtual dojo if you want to hear it in its entirety. I don't know if all of you know that every single morning at 10, I put out a, a different leadership lesson uh, on some subject because I wanted to make sure that that part of what we do still happened as well. Um, in closing this thing, I, as I always do, I'm gonna, every time I do a seminar, I'm going to try to I'm going to try to close with something very actionable for everyone. And I know that, that you're already in it. So take what is useful. And, and, and if you're already way ahead of it, don't, you know, that's cool. But I, I wrote time to take action and to create your action plan, answer these questions. First one, where are you now? What's the situation? The second one is where do you want to go? What is it that you want to happen? And this, by the way, of course, I'm speaking specifically in our leadership roles as I ask these questions. Because the third one is, who are you loyal to? The fourth one is, whose help do you need? And in answering that question, you should think internally and externally. The next one is, who's counting on you for leadership? And then the last one is, what are your strategic priorities? Of course, based on all those. And then in closing, once you identify these, the rest is simple but not easy. All you have to do is act on them daily with commitment and aggressiveness. And that is the formal part of this training session. Uh, I hope that some of it was, was useful to some of you. I know that you were useful to me. I, um, you know, I, I, as I told you, I recorded this so I can share it with other people. So if... Um, so if anybody has any other words of wisdom they would like to share or uh, just wants to chit chat for whatever time I got left um, before my, my math class, um, I'll, you know, but, I, but we can do that after I stop recording. But does anybody have any, anything that they would like to actually add to this document that could be helpful to others? I would just like to say that I think what you and Scott are doing is a really good demonstration particularly to the young people in our programs uh, that when something becomes an obstacle to where you're trying to go or what you're trying to do, that you don't stop, that you back up and assess where you are and find another path to the end. And I think it's a really great real life demonstration of that. Thank you. That is awesome. Thank you. Um, I've got some lessons or advice from the front line, if you will. Um, if you know anyone who has a 3D printer, get them online, get them downloading files um, for face shields. Hmm. They're really easy to make. I've made about 100 in my basement so far. Wow. These are for your first responders in the ERs. Um, they basically take a little tiny bit of 3D printer filament and they take a sheet protector from office supply store and they magically have a new piece of protective equipment. Second one is what we're getting to now is intubation boxes. These are simply 
They're about two and a half feet by two and a half feet, feet clear plexiglass boxes. And they let them put this around the person's head as they're intubating them so the uh, first, first responders are not getting exposed to all the virus. They're super easy to make. Those are anyone who's got a wood shop at home and can cut a piece of wood and cut a piece of plexiglass and can make them. Your hospitals will probably be looking for these like ours are now. So pass that along. I know you've got a lot of handy people in the school, sir. So that would certainly be um, something they could look into real easy and will probably be needed in the coming weeks. Bruce, thank you. So. Uh, that, that's straight. That's straight up good. Good information too. We we've been anyone that's doing that in our community right now. Send them our way, and we've got them connected with emergency management to hit first Department of Health and our major hospitals and then the Florida Supplier Emergency Network. So um, there is a, a network in place even for people making it in their basement. Well, we don't have basements in Florida. Yeah, well. <laughs> uh, I'm in my basement, as you can see, so. Yeah, it's, it's true though, it's, it, it's, uh, they're useful and even the, the boxes as well are starting to come in and face shields yep. as well too. So that's all really easy ways for people to continue to, to work and with. It, and it gets people moving again you know there's a lot of people sitting at home feeling like i'm useless right now yeah. and they're not nobody's useless right now you know a pair of hands that can glue together an intubation box is incredibly useful for that hospital and you know if we can keep one nurse or doctor healthy how many more people will they keep healthy i mean that's that's the circle where we need to kind of fill in right now that that's our emergency management program you know keep our doctors healthy because without them all is lost, if you will. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so you've got a couple. Of... 22 years, so <laughs> yeah. years in the ER. So thank you yeah. very much. No, it's, it, you know, and, and people don't think about that day to day. You know, we're blessed with an incredibly robust medical system. Yeah. Yeah. But even that has a capacity. Yeah. Those people have a capacity. And here they're, they're at their breaking point. So yeah. doing whatever we can. Absolutely. I'll, uh, I'll just use the opportunity to, to segue that into this, you know, how to build that back into this conversation too. And everything that you talked about and that we've talked about all had to do with others and, and how we interact with others, how we relate to others, how we view others, um, and leadership not being self-serving. It's all about others. So whether you're, you're mentoring, whether you're um, trying to help people and set the example, at the end of the day, it's, a, it's about others. And I would even go as far to say even protecting ourselves is about others, especially those of you that, uh, that have families and people that rely on you as leaders. Suddenly it's important that you take your vitamins. Suddenly it's important that you, you take care of yourself because you've got a whole bunch of people relying on you. And in this case, and to, to Scott's point and others, our whole community is relying on you. So to use, use your time, I mean, we're doing things as simple as uh, call your neighbors, find out who's, who's out of work, who doesn't have that roll of toilet paper, who doesn't have the means to be able to, to survive. And we don't do that enough anyways. But right now, if you know that your kids' friends' parents need help and your kids are friends with those kids and, and they're going to be hanging out together, together again, you want everybody around your circle to be healthy so we get back to that circle again. and i'm not referring to the six foot one, but the the bigger circle of, of people within our our reach and our influence and and i think this whole lesson had to do with with other uh, as a leader well um you know speaking speaking of um speaking of semantical distinctions and how important they are um i just want to remind everybody if you don't know already that um, the federal government wants us to use the term physical distancing, not social distancing. And I think that's a very critical distinction. Yeah. Because I'm not intending to socially distance myself from anybody I care about. Right. Yeah. I'm going to be there for them as much as I can. Love I, it. I, I may have to be physically apart from them, but I'm not social distancing anybody. I hadn't even heard that. I had not even I heard that. I either. I love it. Yeah. yeah that's, a, that's a really significant yes. semantic change. <laughs> I hadn't, take it away. <laughs> I hadn't even heard about it, but I agree with it 100% because that's, that's why we, when we started, the first week that we were closed, we, we shot all those videos with the intent of just building an online platform that you guys could train with. And then 
I realized that that's the part that would be miss missing, right? The social interaction, the ability to do what we're doing right now, the ability for Sensei to do it with the students, that, that's just so critically important. You can't match that with any pre-recorded material. So, uh, you know, and, and another great point, of course, Ephraim, is that like today, so I was in here with my guys, and we, when we finished shooting, I brought my three boys in here, and I made them get on, on the FaceTime and, and talk, to, talk to, mom, to my mom, to their grandmother, right? Because right. she's doing what she's supposed to be doing. She's home quarantined, right? I mean, I, I told her early on because, you know, her, her church was wanting her to come in. I said, Mom, no, you need to, you need to, th there's technology for a reason. <laughs> you need to be at home. But then, yep. but then I, um, you know, I, I uh, made sure that we get with her on video every day. So I think that's a great point, Ephraim, is that we, you know, in fact, here's, here's one more point that several of you alluded to that's relevant in this thing. I'm thinking right now about what Bill said about us not doing, Bill Cronin said about us not doing enough of what the things we're supposed to do anyway, right? Mm. It's, I mean, that's, that can be a closing thing, right? Like, like every single thing that we've discussed from a leadership perspective, from a social perspective, from a, I mean, well, maybe with the exception of, of building masks and, and boxes to put around our head, everything else. Not on our heads. <laughs> everything else that, we, that guy. Yeah. Everything else that we talked about is, is stuff that really we should be doing anyway. But we yeah. just got to remember even more so in, in these kinds of critical times to, to actually do it. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, and you know, one more thing, sir, and you and I, I don't know everyone, everyone's background, but you and I have certainly seen it. Stress and lack of sleep makes people ornery. Yeah. They get cranky, they get sensitive, they don't think about what they say, and we've got to remind everyone, take a step back, take a breath, that's not what they meant. Everyone, you know, I'm, I'm sure I can say up here, nobody is sleeping well. Everyone's got some anxiety about something, you know, I'm probably on five hours a night because I'm doing stuff. Cause like I said, I'm trying to get these things done for the hospital. I'm yelling at my kids to get to bed and get a good night's sleep. And I'm not listening to my own advice, but I'm doing it consciously. Your immune system too. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah. But so, you know, everyone's got to step back, take a breath. Everyone's on edge, you know? So I'm going to say this now to you then Scott. Uh, get some sleep tonight. <laughs> and I was waiting for it. <laughs> no, because it's another great point. We do have to practice what we preach in, you know, in every way. Uh, I, I remember, in, in, I know what you were alluding to, and, and I remember a particular situation uh, when I hadn't slept for days, and my platoon sergeant came up to me, and I remember this like it was one of the most meaningful moments in my life. <clears throat> my platoon sergeant came up to me and he said, sir, here's a sandwich go to sleep. And, you know, and he said, I got it covered because, you know, I was leading and leading. I wasn't eating. I wasn't sleeping. And this, this old crusty NCO that, that cared about me said, get to your cot. I got you covered. And I think it's important. It's a great place to close that as leaders, we have to look out for each other as well. And because, because that is our not nature. Our nature is to tell everyone else what they should be doing. And then and then we just keep running full bore and, and don't take care of ourselves. So, so, uh, so let's do those things. Thank you all so much for uh, being a part of this. If, if by any chance anybody wants, um, I'm going to be doing a much less formal, lower level meeting with my MAP class next at seven. Um, but my MAP class, for those of you that don't know, it's my martial arts professional uh, training. It's where I train my future sensei. Uh, normally it's where I'm teaching communication and teaching and pedagogy skills and and marketing skills and all of that today is going to be um, obviously kind of similar on the theme. In fact, what I what I'm going to talk to them about is the 1090 rule, like 10%. What happens to you 9%? How you react to it? Circles of concern and circles of control, which you know Bill Boers are actually brought up in the discussion, um, and empowering lives through martial arts and what we actually mean by that. So it's going to be a much more general. I'm just going to get them talking. It's just to be honest, more than anything, it's because I know all these teens that usually are used to meeting with me every Friday night. Um, for the last uh, two, I just recorded something and sent it to them. And so I realized it was time that we get some community going with them too. So um, God bless y'all. I totally appreciate you and everything you do. If, if uh, I can serve any of you in any way, if you need any help, 
uh, feel free to reach out and uh, can go off and lead confidently. Mm. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Great Master. Good evening. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for all your contributions. Thank you.